Hey guys and welcome to Slash Rex Games. Today I'm going to be talking about macros. If you're using a, uh, a legacy version of GameMaker or an older version of GameMaker Studio, uh, it's called a constant. So basically a macro is something that can hold a constant value. This value can be a real value, like a number, or a boolean, you know, true false. Uh, but it can also be a string or an expression. It's quite interesting. A macro or a constant is different to a normal variable in that it cannot be changed. So when you're setting up your, your configuration here, you make a constant or macro, and then when the game runs, it first goes through those, sets them up, and then it runs the rest of your code. So you need to make sure that none of these macros or constants uh, refer to any other piece of code that may exist. It can refer to um, resources, because obviously resources and the configurations over here under macros, that all uh, you know runs right at the beginning. So yeah, make sure that when you do define a macro, it doesn't uh, use a script or piece of code or an object that comes into in existence later on in your game. So macros are basically global constant variables, if you think of it that way, because any object or instance in your room, any script, any piece of your game world will be able to access these constant macro you know, values at any point in time. So to create a, a macro, basically here we go under macros, uh, again if you're using legacy versions of GameMaker, or all the versions of Game Maker Studio, it's either under here or you go into resources and say define constants. It brings up the exact same screen. See? So basically, here we've got two default macros. We've got GM build date, that's some long number there, and we've got the version 1.000. So to make a macro, we just click insert and you give it a name. It's conventional to use uppercase, so cheese, for example, or max cheese. See? So use uppercase, just so that when you're using it in your code, you know oh, that's a macro. And then you can give it a value like 17 or 21, you know, 121 or something, anything. And if it's a string, here you say, you know, this is cheese, just like that. Strings have to be in your open and close quotation marks, just like that. That's the strings. So to separate uh, a macro name, I suggest you use the underscore, or not at all. Don't use spaces or anything else. Um, yeah because it won't be allowed. So underscore is where it's at, right there. Just like that. So here we've got max cheese, and then here at the bottom you can add, you can insert, you can clear all these macros, you can delete certain ones, you can shift them up and down, you can sort them alphabetically, you can load and save them, it's just uh, text files pretty much. So you can have certain configurations and load those in at, at specific times in your game. So yeah, those are macros. Another thing to note is that macros can also be functions. So if I have max cheese over here, I don't have to have a you know, a real number like 15 or a string. I could also have something, some random built in function. For example, the random uh, function or the iRandom function, I'm going to use iRandom over here. If I say 15, so that'll generate a number between, you know, 0 and 15. So the thing about this sort of constant is that every time I refer to max cheese, it's going to return whatever's here, right? So it could be 0, it could be 5, it could be 15, that's what it's going to be doing. So in this sense, it's not exactly returning the exact same constant value, but it's, restor it's returning a constant f return value of a function. So I'm going to show you that in practice right over here. So we've got max cheese, we're setting it to iRandom15, going to click OK, yes, save those. I'm going to make a object here, I'm not going to give it a name, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to tell it to draw that constant. So here we have draw text, and we're just going to say x and y, and string, and then it was max cheese. See, check changes to that color over there, it's like a ready pink, and then we close that off. And this is going to be doing this like every step, so I'll show you exactly how it works. So I'm just going to plonk this somewhere in the middle of the room. Just over there, it doesn't matter. Play. So notice how it's getting that value of that macro, but it's it's a different number each time between 0 and 15, inclusive of those two. So yeah, so in this case, our constant value is not exactly the, the value itself, but the function, you know. We want to always use a short term instead of having to type out that function every single time if we use it a lot. So there we go, that's how it's going. So now, let's jump into an example that uses a whole lot of random magic numbers and magic functions and stuff, and we're going to simplify it by using some macros and constants. So let's do that right now. So here it is. Don't fill up on bread. Uh, it's basically just a point-and-click game where you have a 
I don't know, a game room and things pop up on the screen, they float around and move around, you gotta click them, you get points. If you click the wrong ones, you lose, you know, that kind of thing. So we're gonna click how to play. See so here. Click few items to increase your satisfaction. Water decreases your satisfaction by twenty points. Your satisfaction also decreases over time, so eat up. That's basically it's a very simple concept. So we go back and here we're gonna go start and things are gonna start popping up and we're gonna click them. See? Easy. Notice our satisfaction goes up, it also goes down every you know split seconds, food stuffs goes up. You can notice that there's a max amount of foodstuffs that I want available on the screen. Oh, watch out, warning, too many tasty options. We've got to keep clicking. And when we get to a certain number, it tells us how many items we consumed. Hamburgers, hot dogs, breading, meats, shrimp, chicken, and water. Basically, it's very simple. So, pretend this is the average game, and now we want to simplify it to the extent where we can change certain things about it to make it harder, make it run for longer, without having to refer back to all that code and hunt down things. So basically that's what we're going to do. We're going to click back, back to main menu, we're going to exit this, and go to the project. So here's the project. I've got all those sprites over here. I've got some backgrounds, depending on what room. I've got a script that does the hover. Check that out in the banner. That's a pretty cool uh, button effect. Then I've got some fonts to make it look like chalk or the score font right over there. And moving along, we've got the objects. Notice I'm using some parents. I'm using a bit of inheritance here to simplify things. You don't know about inheritance? Check out my tutorial on that. Very good concept to learn. will save you a lot of time. So what we're trying to do here is we're going to reduce the number of magic numbers and repeated code. One of the major parts of design patterns is reducing what is basically called magic numbers. And what magic numbers are, just random variables that have no meaning attached to them. They're just numbers like 50, 100. You don't know what they are. And if you are someone like me who turns 15 minutes of inspiration into four hours of hard work later to just shelf a project and call it a prototype, then when you come back to some of these prototypes, you're not going to know exactly what's going on. So it's best to change these magic numbers into words that are very descriptive. And we can use constants to do that, basically. It's really cool. So run over here, we've got a controller. This controller creates all the food items. You know, we initialize some globals here. Uh, starting the score at 10 and here we're making some colors over here. We are doing these alarms which basically decrement the score or you know spawn random items. If we go into these alarms over here you notice this one creates food. Here we have a magic number. Instance number of object food is less than 50. I mean, what does that mean? I mean, it's not that crazy of a magic number. I mean, here we can work out from the context that we want to make sure that as long as we have less than 50 food items, we're going to keep creating food items, basically. And then we're just calling this again. If we go to alarm 1, we're randomizing stuff. We are doing things here. We are decreasing score. Alarm 2 is flashing. This is for the uh, too many tasty options warning screen. Then in our step over here, basically we're saying if score is less than 0 or score is greater than 100. Again, this is a bit of a magic number. 100 we don't know, I mean, from the context, we can assume that it means that if our score is more than 100, then go to room score. But at a later period of time, maybe we want this game to run for longer. And if this gets more complicated, we're going to have to hunt down this variable to change that. But if we turn this into a constant, then we can just change the constant there and the game goes on for longer. And then here we're just drawing the GI, GUI, which again draws the color and what we want to draw, especially here. The warning right there. So, okay, so that's basically that. The rest of these items, don't have to worry about, they just do all kinds of cool stuff uh, for the game. So, all the things, all these magic numbers right here in this object controller. So, we're going to go into our macros, and notice here we've got the basic, you know, default macros, and we're going to create a few you know, that can reduce some of these magic numbers. So, the first one here, if we go into the create, was this one over here. COL equals make color red, green, blue, 183, 224, 31. Now, we can take this out, remember, because a constant can be a function. We're going to take that out, you know, actually delete that whole line, say OK. We're going to go into constants again. We're going to add a constant. We're going to put that value in, make color RGB. And here we're going to call this color SXG lime. So that's basically my slash X game lime. And those are the three color components. So that's our first constant. Now let's look where else we can make a constant. We go back into alarm zero, which creates the food. Instance number of object food is less than 50. So we're going to turn that into a constant. We're going to call it max food. So insert, call something max food. Again, we're using uppercase and we're using the underscore to separate our words. And here I'm going to say 50, just like that. So here we can replace this with max food. First, we have to save that. Yes, this will change. Bam, see? Max food. Done, done, done. Next, 
if we go into our step event, this handled when we go into the next room over here. So we're going to change this to max score. Copy that, go OK, go back into configurations, make a new macro, max score. And we're going to slap in a value of 200 right over there. See, just like that. Then we can say OK. Now remember we, save that, remember we did this whole, we removed that line of code that created the color. So if we go into our draw GUI over here where we use that color, draw set color, change this, and instead we're going to call this color, there we go, see, constant is now here, double click it, it changes to that pinky red color, and now it's being used. Pretty simple. Here again, this is the lines 9 to 15 is when we display that warning too many tasty options onto the screen, so this is a magic number. I mean, from the context again, we can assume that it means that if our object food is, is greater than 40, then we can display this warning, but if we want to change that at a later stage, it's best to turn this into a macro. So here we're going to say tasty warning. Just like that, copy that, say OK, it was set to 40, go to configurations, new configuration, tasty warning, and 40. Simple like that. So there we have different kinds of macros. Here we're using a function in the previous little example we used, our iRandom function. And here we've got other just real numbers. We've got score, we've got tasty warning, and we've got max food. So here we say OK, say save, yes, save the whole project. So now if we click play, it'll run exactly the same as it did before, but we can easily change the variables that make the whole thing run just by changing those constants. So, you know, as it goes, there we go, it's still working. We're going to get this up to, oh, whoops, we waited too long and we starved. Keep going. I want to get this up to 40 foodstuffs and then put up that warning will come up. There we go. So 8, 9, 40. There we go. Warning. Too many tasty options. Tasty warning is being displayed. It's pretty simple. Just like that. And these things are loading. And notice here, check this out, it's not getting above 50 right over there. So as long as it's below the max food, it's going to keep spawning these things. So it's using all those constants, and we can easily change them. For example, we can change tasty options. If we go into here, we can change tasty warning to like 20. Right? Now that changes a big dynamic of the game, and we only had to change one little value. We didn't have to hunt down in the object controller where that was being you know, worked out. We can just change it in one place. And we can use that constant as many times as we wish. Okay, let's get up to 20. There we go. Too many tasty options. So just like that, we have removed a whole lot of magic numbers. We've replaced them with constants. Those constants can be changed at any point in time. And it's it's relatively very, very simple to, uh, to put together. So that'll you know, bring your game to a whole different level when it comes to design. So I hope you found this tutorial educational and helpful. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe for more of the very best game maker tutorials. If you're feeling generous, you can check out my Patreon campaign where I'm trying to raise some funds to make this channel better and increase some things and give back to the community. It's pretty awesome. Check that out on the banner. I have a whole nice write-up about that. Let me know what you think. Feel free to like my Facebook page. You can find all the downloadable uh, files of this project in Game Maker Studio right in the description so you can check it out. Play with this game if you like it. Go ahead. Um, also, there's a whole lot of different banners that displayed across during the, the runtime of this video. Uh, they each each of one of them has a link to another tutorial that specifically had a feature that this game displayed. If you want to check that out, you can do that too. Other links are in the description. Please tell me what you thought. I look forward to your comments and feedback. Just put that in the comment section. And I'll see you guys next time for another great game maker tutorial. Cheers for now.